Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Let's see who's here today. Welcome back. It is Workout Wednesday, May 6th, 2020. I'm so happy you're here with us for Workout Wednesday. Do you have a workout plan for today? I do. I can't wait. With one of my friends, we Zoom workout together. Because I know it stinks sometimes being alone and not having your friends. So I'm going to Zoom with my friend and we're going to do our workout together. Hi, Cheryl. Good morning. How are you today? Thanks for joining in. So yesterday was May 5th, also known as Cinco de Mayo. How many of us celebrated Cinco de Mayo? We did a little bit in our house. We made a yummy dinner together. It was so good. We made burritos. We made beef burritos with corn salsa. And for dessert, we made churros. So we definitely had some yummy Cinco de Mayo foods. How about you? Did you celebrate? So today is May 6th, 2020. And you know what's really special about today? Today is actually National Nurses Day. Yeah, it's National Nurses Day. I know it's also Teacher Appreciation Week, um, but it is National Nurses Day. And um, it's so important that we celebrate our nurses. Right now, um, a lot of people aren't able to work, right? Because we're staying home, but nurses are working and they're working extra lots and lots of hours at the hospital and at doctors. So let's celebrate National Nurses Day. Maybe you can, you can thank them by drawing a picture and posting it and tagging it National Nurses Day 2020. Thank a nurse. How cool would that be? I know they would love it. They're working so hard right now. Hello, hello, friends. Thank you for joining. All right, so National Nurses Day. I love it. It's also Teacher Appreciation Week. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've received some beautiful messages and some really generous, beautiful gifts. Do you see my pretty flowers? Yes, one of my students sent me these pretty flowers. I love them. I normally wouldn't keep them downstairs um, because I teach from our basement and I keep them upstairs on our dining room table. So pretty. And um, but I wanted to bring them down here because they just look so beautiful. I love them. Thank you. And I'm also I also got a gift card for my favorite pizza place. I can't wait. Um, I think either Friday or Saturday night we're going to order pizza from there and pick it up. Yummy. So thank you so much for your kindness and your generosity. It's really appreciated. Um, so let's do our emotional check-in. How's everybody feeling today? Let's do our three breaths. Ready? And let's do that lion's breath. are stopping and doing some breaths during the day to help. Sometimes we might need it. Sometimes we might get frustrated. You know, we, we talk about our emotions. They're not always the same like this. We go up and down and up and down all throughout the day. We feel all different things. So it's okay to stop and take a couple deep breaths if you don't feel like you can control your emotions. That's an okay thing to do. You know, you can give yourself a little time out with some deep breaths. So we all need it sometimes. So it's a-okay, you know. Uh, it can be stressful being in the house all the time. But we did have some nice weather. We've been having some nice weather, thankfully, right? And you've been able to go outside, maybe sit on your porch or play in your yard. I know we've been really enjoying the sunshine. And I told you Monday, I enjoyed the sunshine too much. I forgot how sensitive my skin is. And I got burnt like a tomato. How crazy is that? Burnt like a tomato. All right. So... Let's pull out our riddle. Did anybody figure out our riddle? <laughs> Why did the tree, what did the tree wear to the pool party? What did the tree wear to the pool party? Did you figure this one out? Swim trunks. Swim trunks. 
Have you ever heard that term instead of swimsuit or bathing suit trunks, like the boys, the shorts that you wear, those are called trunks, swim trunks. And the bottom, the base of the tree is called the trunk. If you try to wrap your arms around the tree, that's the trunk of the tree. So we have swim trunks. I love it. It's a play on words. I like that riddle. Let's see if you can figure out this one. Wednesday's riddle. How do you know when a volcano gets mad? How do you know when a volcano gets mad? I'd love to hear your answers. I have a few friends that work really hard on those riddles. All right. So we've been every week, we've been memorizing a nursery rhyme, right? For part of our phonemic awareness. And we know that phonemic awareness has to do with just sounds, like hearing sounds and playing with sounds. It has nothing to do with seeing letters or writing letters. Okay, it's just playing with sounds. And it's actually really, really good for your brain. It helps your reading brain and your writing brain. But um, it, it, it's silly, it sounds silly sometimes, but it's fun and it's so good for you. So why not do it, right? All right, so we've been memorizing Little Jack Horner. Do you remember it? So let's say it all together once and we'll do a my turn, your turn and try to say it again together. Are you ready? Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his Christmas pie. He stuck in a thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I? All right, you ready? And if you want to do motions to the poem, uh, to the nursery rhyme, go ahead, okay? All right. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner, eating his Christmas pie. Eating his Christmas pie. He stuck in a thumb and pulled out a plum. And said, what a good boy am I. Good job. Do any of you know what a Christmas pie is? I don't know. I have to look that one up. If you know, let me know what a Christmas pie is. All right, let's try it one time through all together. Are you ready? And let's do some motions, whatever you want to act it out. Hi, Bri. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his Christmas pie. He stuck in a thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I. Did you get it? Did you do some motions to act it out? Love it. Good job. Good job. All right, are you ready to play with some more sounds? Um, where did I put my paper? Miss Kevin, I'll put something in the wrong spot. Give me a second here. And here it is. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, so you're going to do the break it down sound. So we're going to make sure we're hearing all the sounds in a word. All right. So remember, we were using our hands to stretch it like a snake. Right. So we do our hands and we stretch it out like a long snake and make sure we hear each of the sounds in that word. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. The first word is camp. Good. Let's do the next one. Farm. R. Gasp. G. Asp. Oh, that one's tricky. Sheep. Sheep. Good. Hitch. Itch. Good. Sheets. Sheet. Good job. Thumb. Um. Them. Them. Good. Shine. Shine. I didn't do that right. I said ein as one sound. It's sh I. Sorry about that. Left. Left. Wild. W I -ld. Oh, tricky. There were four sounds in that word. All right. I hope you're getting better at that. 
it can be tricky. It's easy to leave sounds out. So remember, we play with those sounds. It makes us better reader and write, readers and writers. It makes our, our reading brain so smart. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add the first sound, a new initial sound to a word. So I'm going to say um, the end of a word, and you're going to put a sound at the beginning. All right, so art, add ch. Did you say chart? That's it. You got it. Try that all together. Let's do it together. Art, add ch. Chart, good. Older, add ch. Shoulder, good. Ein, add ch. Ein, shine, good. Ease, add th. These, good. Aid, add sh. Shade. Did you get it? Awesome. So now we're going to take that initial sound away. All right. So if I say sheep, I'm going to say sheep without sh. How do you say sheep without sh? Eep. Did you get it? All right. Chair without ch. Air. Good. Thunder without th. Under. Good. Cheat without ch. Eat. Good. And shake without sh. Ache. You got it. Double thumbs up. Good job. All right. So now we are going to substitute the initial sound. Remember I talked about when, say, Miss Kavanaugh couldn't come to school, you'd get a substitute. You'd get someone else in her place. We're going to put some sounds in the place of a different sound. Same thing, right? So if my word is shoe, all right, shoe, substitute ch. Chew, all right? So shoe, substitute ch, chew. All right, here's the next one. Trick, substitute So trick would become thick, good. Please, substitute these, very good. This is a really hard one. If you're getting these, oh, I right, cheers to you. Slow, substitute sh. So slow becomes show. Good. Brick, substitute ch. Brick becomes chick. Did you get it? Good. Tomorrow we're actually going to um, try something a little bit new um, during our phonics time. I mean, on Friday. So uh, make sure you have a piece of paper or a dry erase board or a chalkboard. A dry erase board or chalkboard would be the best for the activity that we're going to do. But if you don't have it, it's okay. I will show you another way to do it on paper. So you need something to write with and dry erase or chalkboard for um for tomorrow while we're together during our phonics practice time. So for phonics practice today, I want to do a sound review of all of our sounds. A quick, a really quick review. Just make sure that we're saying our sounds correctly. Because we talk about a lot of times we tend to get a little lazy with our mouths and we say our sounds incorrectly, which can make it very confusing when we go to write or read. So let's make sure that we know the proper sounds. I'll say it, you say it just for practice, okay? And um, we'll review the consonants first and then we'll go over our vowels and then we'll go over our digraphs. Are you ready? The sound is mm. The sound is The sound is The sound is g. The sound is r. The sound is The sound is the sound is t. And what does Miss Kevin always say? It's not t. It's t. The sound is m. The sound is w. The sound is d. Good job. The sound is z. The sound is k. The sound is s. The sound is the sound is k. The sound is o. The sound is b, not b. B. Good job. The sound is p. The sound. Oh, the sound is y. The sound is v. 
Awesome job. Cruising on through. I love it. I like it. I love it. All right. Next, let's go over our vowels. So when we say the name of our vowels, um, our name is the long sound that we talk about. There's two sounds for our vowels. There's the long sound and the short sound. So we're going to say the long sound and then the short sound. You. Uh. You. Uh. Two times. Ready? E. Eh. E. Eh. I. 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 A. 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 And O. Ah, oh, ah, good job. Awesome. And our digraphs. TH says, CH says, ch. SH says, shh. WH says, wh. awesome. You guys are so great. Kiss your brains, double kiss. So proud of you, moving and grooving. So we have a new word pattern. Yesterday, well, Monday, we did this one. L is in bell. You guys made some great words. I loved your words. I always love seeing all the, your words that you make. You guys always think of ones that I don't think of. And then it makes me feel so proud of you. Yeah, so this was L as in bell, E-L-L. -L. We have a new one today. It's similar. Are you ready? It's very similar. What's similar about this one? What is similar? Yeah, the double L, two L's. But this one, instead of E-L-L, -L, is I-L-L. -L. Ill, say ill. Ill as in pill. Maybe when you've been sick or you need a vitamin, you take a pill. Pill. We know not to touch these things without a grown-up, right? We never touch these things in our house. But this helps us remember. Pill. Ill. Pill. Ill. I-L-L. -L. Say it with me. I-L-L, -L, ill as in pill. Good. And I'm sure you're already thinking of words that rhyme with ill or pill, right? Do you remember the little trick that I showed you? We did it with our name. We did the name game. And you can say ill, right? Ill. And we can point at a sound and just say the sound in front of it. So ill, till, dill, sill, mill, nil, will, fill, pill, bill, yill, rill, lil, gill, hill, kill. Lots of words. Do you remember that silly one? You can do that or you can take out your blend and diagraph map and try to make even more challenging words, right? These are how we make the real challenges. So, Here's my notebook, all set up for word building. Ill, 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 ill. And what can I add? Hmm, ill. Let me look at this map. Hmm, ill. Hmm. Hmm. How about down here? Look. Stapler. Stapler is st, st, ill, st, ill, st, ill. Is that a word? Yes, still, ready? Freeze. Were you still? Yeah, standing still. So let me add that. Still is gonna be my first word. St still. Awesome. I can't wait to see your words for word building. All right, cruising along. Ill is in pill, ill is in still. What other words are you going to make? I love it. All right, so I want to show you um, something that is going to help you in first grade. Are you ready? Are you ready to flex your first grade brains? Yeah. All right, so we all know what this thing is. What's that? It's a 10 frame. And we know in math, 10 frames help us organize. And um, we've done a lot. We've done games with 10 frames. We've done counting with 10 frames. We've done subitizing with 10 frames. We've done teens on double 10 frames. I mean, we could use them for so many things. We've actually used them for problem solving as well. So today, I want to talk about something called turnaround facts. So I'm going to make a fact uh, an addition fact that equals 10. So that means my tens frame is going to be full, right? So watch what I'm going to do. So 
So I did, how many did I do purple? Four. And I'm going to fill in the rest green, green dots. How many green dots do I have? Did you say six? So I have four purple and green, I have six. So we know that this fact, whatever it is, something plus something else equals, what is it going to equal? 10, because our 10 frame is full. So no matter what, it's going to equal 10. All together will be 10, because we know that adding is putting together. All together, 10. Now, there are two ways to write this fact. Watch this. I can write four purple plus six green equals 10, right? Four plus six equals 10. Four plus four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, right? I can prove it. I just proved it. Four plus six equals 10. Now, what if I turned the numbers around? If I flipped their spots, what if I took these numbers that are underlined and changed their spots. What if I wrote this? What if I wrote six plus four equals 10? Does it change? Is that still correct or true? Is six plus four 10? Well, let's start with six. Here's six and count on. Seven, eight, nine, 10. <gasps> I proved it. So look, four plus six equals 10 or six plus four equals 10. That's called a turnaround fact. Oh, sorry, my printer started printing while we're um, <laughs> while we're teaching right here. I guess someone said something. I'm sorry. All right, so I want to show you another one and see if you can figure it out. You think you can do it? All right, let me get my eraser. So we know that no matter what, it's going to equal 10. All right, so let me do this. How many green do I have? two, and I'm going to make the rest purple. How many purple? Six. So I can write my fact, and some of you might have already said what the fact is, two, right, two green, plus eight purple, equals 10 total dots, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? Eight and two is 10. But I wrote two plus eight equals 10. Can you figure out what the turnaround fact is? It's gonna equal 10. The turnaround fact would be, if you said it, eight plus two equals 10. That's a turnaround fact. Now, See if you can come up with another one. Even You might even be able to come up with a, more than one more. You can draw a tens frame or print a tens frame. You can draw it right in your notebook. We've done that together. And then write, fill it out to make a fact, a 10 fact, and then write the turnaround fact. I can't wait to see your work on turnaround facts. You guys are so smart. Your math brains are just growing and growing. It's so exciting. So we have, we still have to go over our problem solving. How did we do with problem solving? Our last problem was about marbles. So it says that I have nine marbles in my pocket and three of them are red, the rest are blue. How many blue marbles do I have? Did you draw a picture? You drew a picture? All right, so I'm gonna start by drawing a pocket Here's the pocket on my pants. All right, I am going to put nine marbles in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now after I draw my objects, what should I always do? You say count them? Good, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine marbles, good. And we know, we only know that three are red. So I'm going to make an R for the three that are red. R, R, R. And it said the rest are blue. 
the rest are blue. So how many blue marbles do I have? Did you count the blank ones? Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you could take a quick look at those blank ones and know that that's a six. Good, so we know we have six blues. Now, did you write an equation for this? Because you could have done it two different ways when you were done. You could have said three reds plus six uh, blues equals nine. Or you could have started with the, what we knew, the nine marbles, and you could have said nine, take away the three red, how many are left? Equals six blue. Look at that. Did you write that equation? I saw your problems. I loved it. Some of you colored. It was really cool. If I had all my colored markers, I would uh, do our marbles the correct color, but I don't have them. All right, you guys are doing awesome. So are you ready for today's problem? So in honor of, remember Monday was National Bird Day? Yeah, this one's about birds. Three birds sat on Christian's fence. 10 more birds joined them. How many birds are on Christian's fence now? So we're getting more tricky. I'm wondering if you can figure this one out. You can draw a picture. I would love to see your picture. See how you draw little birdies. Awesome. 10 birds sat on Christian's fence, 10 more joined them. How many birds are on Christian's fence now? So awesome. You guys are really, I am really blown away with how great you guys are doing with problem solving. Your first grade teachers are going to be super, super excited. Oh, hi, Livia. I missed all of these um, comments, guys. I'm sorry. Hi, Livia. Hi, Christian. Uh, hi, Darlene. <laughs> Eat pizza. Oh, look at that. Oh, you too. I missed all these comments. Oh. And Christian's grandma's here. Oh, I missed all of these. I'm so sorry. Aw, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for all your awesome comments. And I love my flowers. They're so pretty. I love them. I brought them down with me for, for teaching this morning. I'm going to bring them back up when I go upstairs. Love them. They're very pretty. They made my day. I was so excited because I moved to a new house in September and I've never had flowers delivered to my new house. It made me feel so special. Thank you. So before we finish up for today, um, home helpers, speaking of Christian, I saw Christian helping his mom plant their garden. How cool is that? I love it. I can't wait. Um, we are going to be working on our garden. It's ready. Our plants have been growing inside, but we haven't put them in the ground outside yet. We're hoping that this weekend we get to do that. So after I do that, I'll take a picture for you. And JJ's pond has a new pump and I'll get a picture of that and get all updated. But how many of you have been helping at home with outside tasks since the weather's been nice? I love it. Keep it up. I have some Raz Reader shout outs. Are you ready to listen for your name? I know you guys love this part. I was blown away when I logged on to Raz to check how many books have been read since Thursday of last week, because that was the day the names were submitted for our contest of the pizza delivery on Friday nights. So one child's name from our class, or not from our class, from our kindergarten in our, in our school, one child who's done all of their work, their name will go into a raffle. And you saw Mr. Villacrest spins that wheel with everyone's name on it. And it selects one student in each grade level that gets a hot, fresh pizza delivered to their house on Friday night. So cool. Super awesome. I hope someone from our class wins this week. And with the what I saw on Raz, you may. All right. Are you ready to hear the Raz reader so far? I'm so happy. All right. We have Lily. We have Jack, we have Amy, Sophia, Brian, Teresa, Carter, Lennon, Brenda, and Christian. Awesome. You guys have all been reading. I love it. And I am blown away. I have a top three all-star list this week. Like, like saw the numbers and was like, oh, Wait, wait, is this a mistake? They read that many books? Oh, my heart was just so happy. All right, 
Holy guacamole, so proud of my class. All right, ready? We have Amy with 12 books read already this week, Jack with 13 books read, and Lily with 18. I am just blown away. I'm so, so proud of my class. My heart is so happy. Best teacher appreciation week ever because you guys are loving reading and that makes my heart so happy. I love reading too. I'm actually reading two different books right now at the same time. Love to read, love, love, love. So I'm so proud of you guys. I hope you have an awesome day. I'm so happy we came together today again. Um, I love hearing, seeing your comments. I love when you send me pictures of your work. Make sure you send me pictures of your work so I can put your name in that contest. I wanna make sure you're working hard, All right? Don't forget, on our website, you can listen to me read The Magic Treehouse and then you write about it, okay? And Midnight on the Moon, the, the first half of the book is up there, ready to go. All right, so I'm so proud of you. Have an awesome rest of the day. I love you all and I will see you super soon. Bye.